Ghost type check sync pair. Oh my goodness, we have so many of them already, guys. But anyway, how does New Year Dawn and Oricorio fare in terms of this oversaturated competition? In this video, let's find out together. So with that, strap on your seatbelts, sit tight, let's begin this scout or skip video. Here we go. Yo, 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 this is Solo, also known as SPL Gum, also known as Spatial Gum, also known as Grunt, the artist Team Skull Grunt, and this is Pokemon Masters EX, guys. In this video, we discuss the very first, or the second, or whatever you want to consider this, sync pair that is coming out next year. That's just tomorrow. Happy New Year, guys. It is 2023 already. And we have New Year Dawn and Oricorio. And if you are scouting, let me know. If you're skipping, let me know. If you have no idea yet, let me know in the comment section right now. And don't forget as well to hit the thumbs up as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make it your New Year's resolution right now to hit or click the subscribe button and set your notifications to all so that you do not miss my videos ever again unless YouTube decides to be sus about it. But anyway guys, I would like to give a huge shout out as well to all the members of my channel who have been supporting me over 2021 or did I start on 20? Yes, 2021 to today. So you guys are crazy. Thank you so much for all your support. And as extra shout out goes to my gifters who have been kind enough to shower these other people with memberships. Thank you all for your generosity. Anyway guys, first of all, let us begin with our timeline. Because a lot of people ignore this and keep asking me when these sync pairs come out. So, January 1 we have New Year Dawn and New Year Lysia coming out uh, together. And they end together one day after my birthday, that is January 17th. On January 12th, we have um, Cygnus Suit uh, Diantha coming out as a Pokefair Scout. Ends on March 5th, you have around two months, longer than two months actually, to scout, or rather, uh, almost two months to scout for New Year, or rather, Cygnus Suit Diantha. And on my birthday, we have Shauna. Ends on February 5. Shauna is a Spotlight Scout. The Yantha is a Poke Fair. Meanwhile, New Year Dawn and New Year Lysia are Seasonal Scouts. Meaning 7%, 7%, 10%, 7% chance of getting a random 5 star. Meanwhile, everyone 2% chance of scouting for them. Meanwhile, you got a 20,200 paid gem guaranteed to get one copy for New Year Dawn and New Year Lysia, paid gems, mind you, and a 7,500 paid gems guaranteed pool for Shauna if you are going for the paid scout, if you have paid gems. Meanwhile, Pokefairs do not have paid gem guaranteed things. So yeah, you got candy, pre candy coin presents as well. For New Year Dawn, New Year Lysia, if you go for the normal non-paid route, that's 9,000 non-paid gems for 3 multiples, for 3 tech move candy coins, for 3 strike move candy coins, for 3 support move candy coins, and no presents at all for the Yanta. So sad. But anyway, guys, that's that. Let us move on. If you are want, if you want. A little uh, analysis of each one, not in, not as in-depth as this one. You can check out my January 2023 Sync Pairs Who to Scout for video where I discuss each one a little bit briefer. But that, that, that's that. Let us move on to the detailed analysis of New Year Dawn. So if you see this background image, congratulations. You have successfully become an idol and scouted for New Year Dawn. And Ori Koryo. She has three different moves. She has Revelation Dance, she has Feather Dance, and Teether Dance. Or Teether Dance. Let me just... There you go. 
And for her trainer move, you got another dance as well. Perfect dance. A, a sync pair with four different types of dances. Pretty cool, guys. Anyway, Revelation Dance is her damaging attack. It is a 3-move gauge attack that hits one opponent, no additional effect. Feather Dance, no damage, 2-move gauge hits one opponent, but lowers the opponent's stats or lowers the opponent's attack stat minus 2. Teeter Dance, on the other hand, 2-move gauges, hits everyone and leaves the opponent's everyone confused. Perfect Dance, trainer move, applies stat reduction defense effect to the allied field of play, meaning the opponent cannot lower everyone's stats once this is in effect. Meanwhile, restores your HP by 40%. You can use this twice, so this is basically a double potion for Dawn or New Year Dawn. And then it raises your evasiveness plus one and another plus one from the stat up times two passive skill that she has. So this basically, whenever a stat of New Year Dawn is raised, it basically raises double. Now as you might see over here, the only stat you can raise with New Year Dawn is actually evasiveness by using perfect dance. So this actually is a sync pair that relies on other sync pairs to buff her up. You know, you want to buff critical hit rate, so maybe get a support that can buff that plus some other stats. One good example is Cygnus with Morty, which the first sunny day you use gets to buff up attack, defense, special attack, special defense, speed, and whenever it is sunny and you use her or uh, his trainer move, you get to raise critical hit rate as well. I think also at defense, special defense, and I think speed stat as well. So every single time these stats are raised, you get to raise double the stat ranks. Meanwhile, you also get, um, you know, in, in Cygnus with Morty's kit, after you use your sync move, I think at 3 out of 5, you get to raise 5 stats again. So every single time you raise 5 stats, for New Year Dawn, it's basically raising 10 stats instead of just 5. Or 5 stats times 2 of each stat. So, you know, his her trainer move, or her sync move rather, is a built-in Rising Tide. Rising Tide, the higher your stats are, the stronger the damage. Now, I think Rising Tide stacks or maxes out with 21 stat increases. So, by using Cygnus with Morty, you know, you want to normally use a 6-star EX support first for your sync move. So, once you use Sunny Day and you use a sync move, if you have him 3 out of 5, you basically raise 20 stats, or your stats plus 20. And just using Perfect Dance, max out all stats, Sing Move Multiplier, max out immediately. So that is pretty cool over there, guys. And then, um, we have other skills. So we have Double Drop. When you lower the opponent's stats, it is lowered by double. Now, you can lower the opponent's attack stat minus 2. So every single time you use Feather Dance, instead of minus 2, you lower the opponent's attack minus 4. Two Feather Dances immediately minimum attack stat for the opponent. And then the interesting thing is extra special ghost damage. Whenever you use an attack that hits an opponent, a move that hits an opponent, you deal damage to the opponent. So, basically every single one of her attacks or her moves are attack moves. Revelation Dance hits the opponent using its normal attack damage, plus extra special ghost damage. Feather Dance lowers the opponent's attack stat, plus it deals extra special ghost damage. Teeter Dance confuses every single opponent, and then together with Affecting everyone, you also damage everyone with extra special ghost damage. So this is pretty cool because you're damaging every single opponent whenever you use a move, guys. But again, reliant on other sync pairs because she cannot raise any other stat aside from evasiveness. But, you know, let's check out her grid and maybe she can raise some other stats here. 
One out of five, you got Antitoxin. You got Clear Headed. You got Fast Runner. Two out of five, you got Perfect Dance Master Healer One, as well as an MP Refresh. So whenever you use an, you have an MP Refresh. Just one MP Refresh, you can max out her evasiveness stat. And with every Master Healer, you recover 10% more HP whenever you use Perfect Dance. That's already recovering your HP by 40%. So by getting a Master Healer 1, you recover 50%, and uh, you know, you can use this twice. Quick Cure, you know what that does. Quick Tempo speeds up the move gauge at the start of the battle. Stop hitting yourself 5 raises the chances that opponents will attack themselves when they are confused. Good for Teeter that. And then 3 out of 5, you got Charging Infliction 4. Whenever you use a status move, that is either Teeter Dance or Feather Dance. You recover your move gauge plus 4. When you have an Ale move gauge max minus 2 in your uh, champion stadium, every single use will max this out. So you can technically just keep using if you want to use her as a, as a sync pair to just attack everyone. You know, you can just use Teeter Dance, Teeter Dance, Teeter Dance, Teeter Dance. Every single time you use Teeter Dance, you deal extra ghost damage, extra special ghost damage to everyone. And then together with that, you just always charge your move gauge plus 4. So if you have a sync pair that relies on the move gauge a lot, like for example, probably you can have um, Renegade Cynthia, Shadow Ball, uses 3 move gauges. Just keep using Teeter Dance. You hit everyone. You confuse everyone. Fill up the move gauge for other sync pairs to use them up. So that's the good thing about Charging Infliction 4. Grab Bag. Whenever you attack an opponent, you get to lower one stat at random. So this I this happens with Revelation Dance, Teeter Dance, or um, Feather Dance. Any of her moves. Interferencing 5, if the opponent is confused, flinching, or trapped, you get to uh, deal 50% stronger sick move damage. So, it's easy because it's easy to confuse the opponent, just use Teeter Dance. Perfect Dance Master Healer 1 again. Power Posture, the lower the opponent's attack stat is. The stronger your attacks are, you can use Feather Dance for this one, but I'm not sure if Power Posture actually affects extra special ghost damage. If you guys know, let me know in the comment section. But let's just ignore the extra special ghost damage now, and let's just assume that Power Posture only works for Revelation Dance. Meanwhile, Recuperation 2, every single time you use your Sync move, you get to recover 40% HP. Which you get to recover HP by using your sync move, you're using, you're using your trainer move. And then she's a pretty evasive sync pair. So I'm expecting her to kind of survive a lot of the opponent's irritating attacks. Safety tether at the start, or rather when you use your sync move for the very first time, you get to give yourself an endure effect. Sync power flux, the fuller your move gauge is, the stronger your sync move is gonna be, and to maximize this, do not get ally move gauge max minus 2. So you got a full 6 move gauge, but ally move gauge max minus 2 is okay as well. It just weakens your sync move by a little bit. Meanwhile, you got 2 extra sync nuke tiles to power up your sync move. Now, let's talk about her setup later. Now, let's move back to our timeline. Because a lot of people keep forgetting this. So again, she is coming out together with New Year Lysia. And then she ends on January 17. One day before she ends, Shauna is coming out. And that's also my birthday. I have to emphasize that because... <laughs> give me some gifts, everyone. Sus. And then... Um, Cygnus with the Yantha is coming out on January 12. Ends on March 5. Now, let us move on to the... Stats. New Year Dawn, highest special attack stat. But then she's the only one that uses special attack stat. And then, uh, I mean, in terms of defense, special defense, pretty average for a tech sync pair. 
HP on the low side, speed on the low side, but then you got Charging Infliction 4 just in case you want to just focus on the using your uh, status moves for this one. Stats aren't everything, and we have the multipliers as you can see over here. She only has one attack move multiplier, the fewest among these four. Interestingly, because Shauna is a support sync pair and has two attack move multipliers instead of just one. Power posture, the lower the opponent's attack stat is, the stronger your attack move damage. Again, I'm just assuming revelation dance only, but it might actually work for extra special ghost damage. Meanwhile, New Year Dawn has a built-in rising tide stronger. Um, the higher your stats are, the stronger the damage becomes. In Terrifying 5, the opponent is confused, trap, or flinching. You got 50% stronger sync move damage. Sync power flux, the fuller your move gauge is, the stronger the sync move damage. Now, as I said, we have an oversaturated field of ghost type tech sync pairs. We actually have 5 of them that can be 6 star EX. And these are New Year Lysia together with Fall Azerola, Fall Morty, Renegade Cynthia, and Cygnus Suit Corinna. Now, as I was telling everyone, if you plan, if you're confused, if you want to scout for New Year Lily or not, you know, you can skip New Year, or rather, not New Year Lily, uh, Anniversary Lily. You can skip Anniversary Lily and just for go for Cygnus Suit Corinna. You will not go wrong with Cygnus with Corinna because she is just a beast. She is so strong. Justice for Corinna, but lacking justice for Lucario. But then Lucario got some justice afterward. But now it's justice for Corinna's Lucario. So wonder when Corinna's Lucario will get a, a little buff over there. But then, as you can see over here, New Year Lysia does not have a lot of attack move multi she has the least attack move multipliers uh in terms of sync move multipliers well you know what let us now go to the grid setup hello stdk12 i saw your comment sus prank on the pokemon masters poma tool sus but anyway Power Posture is just over there, as you can see over here. We can get Power Posture. Um, I don't know. Should we power up Revelation Dance? Probably a Recuperation 2. Probably a Trainer Move. Um, safety Tether. I honestly don't know what to build her up with Power Posture. Can we actually get... You know what? Can we... Let's, let's go for the Sync Move first. So sync move, we have sync power flux over here. We have interference sync five over here. We got this. We got this. All right, perfect. Uh, but then we do not have the move gauge or MP refresh for the trainer move, which is completely fine, because other sync pairs should be able to boost your stats. So that is our uh, sync move thing. But can we get power posture together with? Sync power flux and stuff. So, can we get something like this? Uh, getting something like this, this. Oh, not enough, not enough. Uh, how about remove this? Get this? No. Get this? No. Uh. Grab bag is 10, 9 energy, 7 energy. A little bit difficult to do. I'm not sure if it's actually possible. Maybe it is possible. Maybe it's not possible. But I'm trying. And for the meantime, I cannot do it. So it's either you choose full on sync move multipliers or attack move multiplier but then maybe i'll do something like this again so maybe something like this to power up or to max out uh sync sync this would to max out new year dawn's sync move thing three out of five mind you all right but how do these equate to numbers let's check 
สิงนาสุดเขาเล่นนะ highest attack move damage again this relies on ghost zone guys so you might want to bring in renegade Cynthia or another sing bear that can bring in ghost zone is actually cosplay Lily by random so in terms of Without Ghost Zone or something, you know, Signesut Corina is still the way to go. Very, very strong. In fact, Signesut Corina before New Year Dawn came out was the strongest Ghost type, both in attack move move damage as well as the sync move damage. New Year Dawn, sync move queen right now, strongest sync move um, nuke. Damage, sync nuke damage. But let us analyze this. They both have rising tide. Signus with Karina opponent stats cannot go up above zero. That's the built-in multiplier. And this is a problem because you cannot steal the opponent's critical hit rate. I think. I think. Can you actually steal the opponent's critical hit rate? Let me know. If you know, but I remember in the um, you know Unity Gala challenge that uh, what you call it that Lear is stealing your critical hit rate. So anyway, guys, the the problem with Cygnus with Corina is that normally, you know, when the opponent just raises its stats to above one, excluding. Uh, sync buffs. Your built-in uh, multiplier will not trigger anymore, and you're left with Rising Tide, which is a very strong multiplier. But then you're lacking one important multiplier over there. Eurylysia does not have that problem. You have a built-in Rising Tide. The only thing you have to do is to. Confuse the opponent using Teeter Dance or any other sync pair to probably flinch. We have a, ghost, a lot of ghost types that can flinch the opponent. Or you can trap the opponent and that is just that. Sync Power Flux will trigger. 1 move gauge, 2 move gauge, 3 move gauge, 4 move gauges. Uh, actually, I think 0 move gauges will also trigger but then there's no power up or something like that. Power Posture. Lower the opponent's attack stat is the stronger the damage. I'm gonna ignore that because the sing move damage is much stronger than that. Azerola just confused the opponent. But then, as you can see over there, the numbers are not exactly that great. Because Azerola came out on 2020. She's completely power creep already, guys. But then 6-star EX pretty good. Fall Morty. Opponent has to be burned, and then the lower the opponent's attack stat is, the stronger the damage. And that's it. That is for Fall Morty. But then, it's much easier to raise your stats than to lower the opponent's stats. Same problem for Corinna and Morty. You have to lower the opponent's stats if their opponent's stats are raised. So, it's a little bit problematic when the opponent likes to raise its stats. Renegade Cynthia, built-in Ghost Zone. Super effective up next can be triggered by using um, your Shadow Sneak, not Shadow Sneak, uh, Shadow Force wisely because normally the Shadow Force super effective up next only applies for Shadow Force. You have to time this properly in order to use that for your Sing move. Brain Sing 5, once you raise your special attack stat, it happens. Smarty Pants, you have to lower the opponent's attack stat is. So, in terms of the ease of sync move, the easiest is actually fall as a roller, just confuse the opponent, interferencing 5 basically. Then New Year Lysia, because you do not have to lower the opponent's stats, you just have to build her up. But then all the others have something to deal with raising or lowering the opponent's stats. The problem with New Year Lysia again is that you have to have another sync pair buff her up because she can only buff her evasiveness stat and nothing else. So have another sync pair buff her up and you have maximum maximum damage for New Year Lissia. Again, 
in terms of if you use Cygnus Suit Morty, just use your Sunny Day once and then have him 3 out of 5. Get that important Sync Sync Grid tile. Just use your Sync move once to buff her stats to plus 20. Just use her trainer move once and then maximum, maximum Sync move damage. That easy and that strong. Again, in terms of max move, attack move damage, she does not compare to the strongest ghost type attackers in the game right now, which is Cygnus with Corinna, Renegade Cynthia, Morty, Anniversary, Lily, and Giovanni. If you have all their sync move or sync grid tiles active, mind you, it's impossible to do, but just in case you're able to do that plus ghost zone, that will happen, and plus super effective up next for everyone. But in terms of sync nuke damage, again, New Year Dawn tops the list right now. As long as you have go zone and the opponent is weak to ghost type attacks, New Year Dawn is the queen of ghost type sync nuke damage. So what are you guys looking down at? New Year Dawn is actually good. And we haven't seen how good extra special ghost type damage does yet. So I'm pretty curious how this does. I can only react to that once I see how it works in actual. So good luck for everyone who's scouting for you New Year Dawn tomorrow. If you want a, a little analysis or something, once she comes out, you can check out my feature video because I'm gonna use her immediately and I scout her together with New Year Lysia. But that's that. Again, there are lots of other sync pairs that are coming in this update. Lots of reruns. Whatever happens, guys, go for your faves instead of the meta. Also, I would like to announce SPL Gum Challenge number four. I think it's number four. It's not two five. It's not number five, right? Anyway, you have the New Year Scout tickets, and if you want to join. Stay tuned because I'm going to post the details later. If you want to join, show off your skills. Now is the time to do that. So save your New Year Scout tickets before anything else, before the video comes out. Because details will be in that video, guys. But anyway, guys, that is it. Again, you can check out my how many gems can we get if you are unsure if we'll be getting enough gems to scout for everyone. But in the meantime, thank you guys for watching my Scout or Skip video for New Year Dawn and Oricorio. I hope you guys learned something and found this helpful. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up again. Subscribe again. L comment down there again. And share this to your friends who play Pokemon Masters because we want to grow the community. It would be fun like that. Anyway, guys. Huge shout out again, lastly, to all the gifted members as well as my gifters, Jeremy and Shadowfill. And a huge thank you again to all the members of my channel, especially my two year members, Shadowfill and Alsin, my one year members, almost two years, some of you, Roy, Luca, Jeremy, Sasri, Marcella, Kosei, and my Ultra Ball tier member, Marokman, my Premier Ball tier member, Agent 10, Splatoon, and Shido Vods. As well as my other Pokeball tier members, Ewis, Tatsuya Golds, Apsaras, Tekmek, and Kundan. And my sussy mods as well. Hello, thank you for your help, guys. Anyway, that's it. This is Sol, also known as Spiel Gum, also known as Spatial Gum, also known as Grunt. Your artist team is called Grunt. Happy New Year! I will see you in the next video. Run!